some of it just has to do with what lessons were really learned from that experiment from Kyrie, Katie, and James Harden. Time will tell, but I don't know. Then you look at the Denver Nuggets, where Jokic already had his MVP seasons without his partner, Jamal Murray, and he obviously very clearly saw the limits of what individual accolades could get you, but they found team success, and the Nuggets played one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best team uh, games that we've seen in the last 10 years or so, you know, up there with the Warriors and, and some of those iconic teams. <laughs> So I got I've got one thing um, I'm gonna remember for for like bad reasons, and one for very good reasons. So which one would you like to hear okay. first? Let's get the bad news out of the way. Right. I think I think how can you escape like remembering 2023 and it, it, it even goes a little earlier into 2022 when it all began the complete epic failure and implosion of the Brooklyn Nets and and what they put together right. Man, um, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I mean, think about it. Like on paper, when they put those three guys together, it wasn't just like you know, it was almost a foregone conclusion. There's no way you're going to be able to stop this team, and this team's going to be rolling toward a championship, if not multiple championships, in the years to come. And look at how that ended. Um, and it really ended at the trading deadline, you know, a year ago, um, when Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant both go. Um, you know, Harden had already left by then. So you look at you look at the implosion of something that looked like a surefire thing, like can't miss situation. And maybe some people would disagree with that. You know, and I think some anybody that's a skeptic now, I, I do think that's a little bit. Come on, man, that's that's hindsight twenty twenty. When, when they put that together, regardless of how you felt about James Harden and Kyrie Irving, right. that looked like something that was going to be unstoppable. And they have nothing to show for it. And they end up jettisoning all those guys off for various parts, the parts unknown. And now um, that's what the Brooklyn Nets were left with. And now they're basically a 500 team with some young talent. And we'll see, you know, where, where they go from there. But for me, th like that storyline has to be there from, and from the bad, uh, on the bad side, on the good side. It's got well, to be there. Hold on. Okay, All right. Go ahead. I like it. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'll let you go because it's the Nuggets. I'm not going to interrupt you with some Nuggets love. No, no, no. Okay, I didn't know if you I should ask you. You wanted to comment on what I just said, but and I, we're going to hear yours obviously for twenty twenty three as well. But I think that it's got to be the Nuggets, man. It's got to be the breakthrough for the franchise, winning a championship with this this transcendent player, this generational player um, who had already won MVPs but didn't have postseason success to be able to answer the bell, man, and, and get this thing across the finish line and do it the way he did. You know, sweeping a guy like LeBron James in the uh, conference finals, winning the NBA finals, uh, doing it in historic fashion with the numbers he was putting up throughout the postseason. So yeah. this player, right, and what he has become, which is a story in and of itself, when you look at his beginnings and, and where he was selected and everything else, to now take a franchise that hadn't won a championship and get that thing across the finish line and be as great as he was, um, for me, it's gotta be the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic and that accomplishment. I see these two storylines somewhat connected in this way, Legs. The Brooklyn Nets story to me was in some ways the story of the limits of the super team era, right? That was a team that was assembled, that was conspired to be like, hey, let's put ourselves together and we'll put ourselves in this can't miss opportunity. And obviously it failed spectacularly. A lot of that has to do with injuries, but some of it just has to do with what lessons were really learned from that experiment from Kyrie, Katie, and James Harden. Time will tell, but I don't know. Then you look at the Denver Nuggets, where Jokic already had his MVP seasons without his partner, Jamal Murray, and he obviously very clearly saw the limits of what individual accolades could get you, but they found team success, and the Nuggets played one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best team uh, games that we've seen in the last 10 years or so, You know, up there with the Warriors and, and some of those iconic teams. So they, had, they formed this real team with one superstar, and I wonder if that it actually will look back on it as a little bit of a line of demarcation and say the Nets disaster, the Nuggets' success, maybe teams start aiming at different things. I think that's a real storyline for me of 2023 is this sort of return of the team team game. Uh, and we see it in – Great take. I think that – I think I love the way you you connected those two situations because if we're, if we're really keeping track and doing the numbers on this thing, more of these – more of these um, attempts to throw guys together in a tight window and win 
have failed than have succeeded by yep. far. So you wonder if now you do sort of get away with that. Now look, you might, you know, you might get a, you know, who knows, maybe the Clippers make a run to a championship this year and you go, okay, well, there you go. You know, they, right. this is kind of what they just did and it worked out. But to this point, it hasn't. And I don't know who's going to bet on them to do it again. So maybe maybe there is some connection there. I like that. I like you bringing that together. I like that 2023 is also the year for me of the next generation arriving. And I'm talking about Anthony Edwards, uh, Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Halliburton, uh, Jalen Williams in, in, a little in Oklahoma City you could throw in there. Shea Gilgis Alexander, 2022, he kind of arrived, but 2023 took it to a whole other level. To me, that's the next generation, and they're all sort of just now breaking into – they're not good second-tier players. They're breaking into that top tier of top-tier guys. And we've already had the Luka, the Jokic, the Giannis. That, like, those guys have already taken over the league in large, uh, a large portion of it. But this next generation of 23, 24 years and, and younger, and those guys look like they are ready now to compete at the, at the high level. That to me is 2023, that generation kind of announcing their arrival. I like that a lot. Would you include the Aaron Fox in that as well? You know what? Why not? We could put him in there because he had such a big breakout year. I think he's, is he a little bit older? Or is he actually yeah. that? Yeah, I think he's a little older. How old are These guys come into the league so young, sometimes I lose track right. of how young they are. Uh, when yeah. they've been around for a little bit, but yeah, no, I like that a lot. I, I, cause look, and the other thing that we're always thinking about the void that is going to be created when LeBron James or Steph Curry are gone from this league, right? So the guys you're mentioning right now are giving you a taste of not just in terms of like, who's going to win. It's, it's also in, ter in terms of who is must see, who is right. entertaining, who is entertaining on that level that every time you watch him you think you're going to maybe see something that's going to make you kind of jump out of your seat like you can't believe what you just saw uh where's that where's that going to come from and so the guys you just mentioned that's the list of players and look it doesn't look like lebron is going anywhere anytime soon steph either they're both playing still at a really yeah. high level so i don't know how much longer they'll be around but they've been around so long particularly lebron it's just natural to start thinking about who's going to take that torch and the guys you just mentioned, like, I think that's part of the conversation. It's very important to the NBA because they market players more than anything else. And it's like, who is that going to be when those guys leave from an entertainment standpoint, a, a spokesman for the league type standpoint, um, just the fan bases that they've created nationwide? Who's, who is it going to be? And I think you just gave us a pretty good short list of some of the, some of the candidates. You mentioned LeBron. To me, 2023 is a little bit about LeBron as well because they win in 2020, the Lakers do. And I thought 2021 and 2022, there was a lot of signs of decline in LeBron. And I kind of thought like, okay, the end is near. He's, he, you could see these dots going downwards. I feel like 2023 was this bounce up. You know, obviously they make a run to the Western Conference Finals. He gets big wins there. He plays great in the Conference Finals, albeit in a sweep. And then out the gate so far this year, I just almost feel like LeBron is having an up tick right now over the last three years which is not anything i predicted so lebron to me is a little bit of a story of 2023 that this late into his career he is still a threat to go to the conference finals and maybe even finals that's not something i would have predicted coming into 2023 to be honest with you i thought we were at the farewell tour-ish portion of his career no I, that's a, that's a, listen it's every it's at the point now I stop thinking about it anymore. It's, I'm going to let that story oh, create it. I'm going to let that story write itself because the speculation, it, yep. it, it defies logic. Like there's nothing yep. I can say that logically makes sense for a guy this age to look this good and to play this way and to look this good physically and still be relevant. And even though the Lakers are like a little bit above 500, they're always going to be a team you're thinking about and talking about because of how good LeBron looks physically and can they potentially make a run? So no, I, it's fair, man. And, and, you know, 2023, I have a feeling we could be doing this exact show next year at the end of 2024, <laughs> saying the same thing about LeBron James. Like that's, that's how far he is to me from looking like he's going to decline. I think if, if he declines from a production standpoint, it's almost feels like it's going to be orchestrated because he's just kind of dialing it into more of a playmaker type role, right. which he can. I mean, if you wanted to, man, he could probably average 18 points a game. And, and average 10, 12 yeah. assists you can even play five more years if you wanted to do that and take some of that scoring load off your shoulders. I think you're, he might do it. I mean, honestly, it might make sense for him. Uh, and then lastly, the in-season tournament. 
you know, this, it's such a big storyline. It sounds like it's here to stay. Um, I think we'll remember the weird courts and the weird jerseys and the, you know, <laughs> I as to, as we go as we move on from it, you know, I'm not I, I'm lukewarm to it. It's not I don't dislike it. I don't love it as much as I did in the early days. But um, I think we'll just remember the end season tournament as 2023. It's just it, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's so it's so it's so close to 2024. Maybe some people wouldn't have considered that. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's when it all sort of took shape. That's the first time we heard about it over the summer. Um, and I think there was skepticism. I know I was one. I was a skeptic that this was going to be something guys were going to care that much about. And it turns out they did. Now we have we did see some lingering after effects of that for some of these teams um, that 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 went all in on it and and some of the struggles they had coming right out of it. Right. And I think there was you know a good debate on whether the Lakers should have hung that banner or not. Um, you know, right. in that story, among those, all those other story banners, that's a whole other conversation. The bottom line is it created compelling television. It created some drama. Guys were into it. They were articulate about how it meant, meant more and felt different. And that's what we were trying to go for as a league. And they accomplished it. What would you say, just to get out of here, this 2023 segment, who do you think is most glad that 2023 is over? Who had a forgettable 2023? I'm going with Clay Thompson. Okay. I'm going with Clay. And look, he, he had a good stretch in 2023 for yeah. a while. But the way it ended for him in the last series of the season against the Lakers and the way it's gone for him this year at the start of the season, I think Clay Thompson, more than anybody, man, I hope he's got some, some good champagne ready to go. Uh, when that clock strikes midnight to turn to 2024, he flips the calendar – uh, I think Clay Thompson is glad to see this year gone, man, for him yeah. because his standard is so high. I know how much it means to him. He's kind of wearing that right now externally, and you can see it. Very frustrated with the way he's played. And, uh, you know, he's going to keep grinding, and we'll see if we can turn it around. But I think he's glad to get this calendar year behind him for the way it ended yeah. the, in the last season and the way it's gone so far this year. I went with John Morant. I think John Morant, if you think about – that the was my second of, choice. Yeah. yeah. The start of 2023, I think, was the we're good in the West comment. That that was like early 2023. And from that moment, you know, the Memphis Grizzly crashed and burned. And obviously he's gotten himself into some off-court troubles. And, and now it, it's almost fitting that he returned midway through December because it really is like, okay, let's close the, the book on this horrible year. And while the season might be over for the Grizzlies, just given where they are in the standings, the year doesn't have to be as they build sword towards something. Uh, the only other candidate I had was Zach Levine. I think Zach Levine has had a pretty forgettable uh, 2023 and, you know, likely traded in 2024 and kind of starts the second half of his career. And I'm, I'm guessing he is pretty excited for 2023 and that chapter of his career to be over with.